Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me to this amazing event. Um, it's uh, very difficult to be second or third in line. I feel bad for Tim because I think we probably say a lot of all the things that we wanted to discuss already in our presentations. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about a bit more broader about this topic and about preservation and modernity. I think that this is something that is relatively new still to our history and um, to our societies because I think it was very late in the game that we realized that there is a significant in our built environment and the, the past and it's something that for millennials probably wasn't really of importance for us as a species but uh, in the last 200 years I think there was a big development for us to understand and get a little bit further into uh, technology we're talking about? Okay. Um, so, uh, as a broad overview, really, it was in the 18th, 19th century, really, that we realized that there is a lot of buildings that have been erected over uh, millennials that are still in very good condition, probably, and that they have survived uh, the time, and that there is a significance to our heritage, to our upbringing, to our history, and that there is a movement at that time that wanted to start to preserve. And I think this is something that we see today in a lot of different countries and aspects where we are very lucky to see preserved cities, preserved structures, and that remind us where we as humans come from, what we were able to achieve over time, the technology that we use, the materials. And I think that this is something that I just wanted to emphasize, it's, it's fairly new that we are, sorry about that, that we are interested in preserving buildings and structures. Um, and there are, of course, examples of like the pyramids of Giza, uh, the Colosseum, uh, some great building structures that just survived um, the time. And we are very lucky that we still have them and now are preserving them for our future generations to also see the rich heritage that we come from. Um, I think um, I wanted to talk a little bit about urban planning because it has a lot to do with uh, the preservation and since we now at uh, a few years ago we passed the the peak point where for the first time in the history of our planet more people are living in an urban environment than uh, in in countryside uh, I want to talk a little bit about the urban evolution and town development and I think it, it just to recap for everybody uh, usually historically towns were founded because of location, uh, strategic locations. Either it was, uh, there was water access, there were trade routes or natural protection. And, um, and then they grew once they established themselves. And um, I, I'm from Germany and uh, there's a really interesting story that I came across a few years ago. Like, I don't know if you've been to the city of Munich, but it was founded for a very specific reason because the Duke that was ruling the land at that time, he didn't want to pay the taxes to the, to the bishop who, was, uh, who owned the bridge over the river Isar a few kilometers down, and he was tired of paying him taxes every time he, his uh, troops or uh, his trade was going over the bridge, so he decided, I'm going to build my own bridge and I'm going to start my own city. So this was how in um, 1158 the city of Munich was founded. And um, I think if you look at historically at how cities developed over the period of time, uh, usually change came from usually disasters. It was either war, it was uh, um, diseases like the Black Plague or um, fires. The city of London is a good example of that. Um, or then because of aspirations. And I think we, I chose the picture of Paris. We all have been there probably. And uh, in the 19th century, there was a big ambitious plan how to redevelop the, the city with uh, a gentleman called Hausmann. And he basically created what we see today as Paris with the big avenues, um, uh, he, the big axes that you see, and that have been replicated in many city planning since then. Uh, 
And then, of course, I mean, now in the last 200 years, a lot of countries, a lot of municipalities have come up with local regulations, how we're going to preserve our cultural heritage. Um, it's something that helps us to identify buildings of significance. And I think it's really important that this is an initiative that should be um, implemented in almost every city around the world, that we have the opportunity to have experts that can identify buildings that are uh, worth keeping and that we should preserve and protect them. Um, and then, of course, we have to look in the future into modernization, and uh, there's a lot of buzzwords flying around. Uh, I think people are really still trying very hard to find opportunities to introduce the 15-minute city. Um, we all know about some of the giga projects where we, with hyperspeed, we're connected. Uh, we're trying to find new ways of urban growth and transformation. And um, I think a lot of it has to do that our cities are so dependent on the automobile. Uh, uh, most of the cities are based on a grid system, and I think we're all struggling in, in various places. I live in Dubai. Uh, traffic is horrendous, and even though with a lot of public transport initiatives, we still haven't been able to cope with the influx of people and therefore the constant growth in traffic. So I think that this is something that we have definitely have to think about at the same time. You know, we need to look at what areas of the cities are there to preserve and others probably have to be really develop developed in order to uh, be able to cope with an increase and in influx of people. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, I think uh, other cities like Hong Kong, for example, there is a, a lot of copy-paste architecture. It kind of um, overrules, I think, the local heritage. It, it really changes how we perceive a place. And I think it's something that we need to think about is that part of uh, um, a modern heritage is starting to identify really an architectural style that is uh, based on the region, it's based on the local materials and uh, the architectural heritage of these places. Um, and then for me, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm all for future, I'm all for technology, but <clears throat> I think what's really important is that we understand where we're coming from and what makes uh, built environment cities, what makes it really attractive and livable. And I think in, 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 in case of the 15-minute city, I think a lot of the places that we are, have here in the Middle East, it's going to be very difficult to achieve this. But maybe we can focus on things that are easy to change and easy to implement. And I think we really have to prioritize green spaces. I think this is something that we all learned from history. We need places where we can take a deep breath and, and uh, feel comfortable. Um, I think public transportation is something that we have to start implementing. We have, people to, we have to give people an alternative. Um, I come from Stuttgart in Germany, which actually is the city of cars. We invented the car, and, but it's also a city with one of the best public transportation systems in the world. Um, I don't need a car when I'm home because I can do everything by tram, by bus, or by metro. And I think that this is something that we have to aspire to. We have to find other uh, modes of transportation. And then, of course, I think something that is really important as well in the future of um, our industry, we have to look into repurposing. And I think that this is something that we have done over time. It's not a new concept. If you look at some historical structures, they have been reused, uh, added on, um, demolished, and rebuilt over thousands of years. And um, I think there's some really good examples of beautiful churches in Europe, for example, that started maybe as a Roman church and later became uh, a Gothic one and, and, and later a Baroque church. So I think there's enough examples how we can do that. And then, of course, we know that there's a lot of approaches and initiatives here in the region. We have the beautiful city of Jeddah that we are in at the moment with World UNESCO World Heritage Site. And um, I, I took this example of uh, Dubai, uh, my home city at the moment, where uh, there is a few buildings that hopefully uh, can stand and withhold the time and be able to be preserved like the World Trade Center Tower, which is a really iconic building. And um, I, I think that 
hopefully they will keep it and remember that this was one of the first high-rise buildings in the entire region. And of course, uh, projects that we're working on at the moment, it was mentioned at the beginning, we're working a lot in with Derea, and um, I think it's this blend of tradition with modern architecture, and I think that this is something where it's really interesting to see how Saudi Arabia is driving this initiative to have a modern heritage architecture and the opportunity to actually showcase the world their rich history. Um, and I'm also running over time, I'm really sorry, but uh, it's such an important topic and um, I just want to run through the last few slides very quickly. Um, so I think it's, we really need to identify what is worth keeping. We have to find a way that we uh, implement laws uh, within the, the, the country structure to make sure that we keep some of our built uh, heritage. And then, of course, uh, we are, times are always evolving. We have to preserve buildings, but we also have to modernize them for modern use. It's very difficult to live in a building that is 500 years old. People were not as tall as today. Sometimes the ceiling heights are maybe only 2 meter 10. So, of course, we have to change that and ad adapt these buildings. Um, and then, of course, we have to look at, at uh, regional styles and, and, and climates. We have to look at the environment and make sure that we find a way how we can interpret um, the upbringing and the heritage where we come from into a built environment and local architecture. Sustainability, I think, is something really important, and sustainability comes very easy, actually, when you understand what is the history of the architecture of the place. If you understand where the, what kind of materials were used, what was the type of architecture that was used for maybe millennials or hundreds of years, and I think we should just look back and understand how our forefathers were doing it so we can implement some of these initiatives to really ensure that we have sustainable buildings and structures. And I, I think this is really something that I encourage everybody. We have to learn a little bit more from the past in order to understand where we're going. Thank you very much. And